Hello everyone, this is 29th December and I'm Moses Sudhiraj, your host. Today we want to talk about uh, two major issues. One is uh, this corruption issue. Recently the Indian government passed the Lokpal bill. So we want to first discuss what corruption actually is and whether corruption is necessarily bad what type of corruption is bad and if it is bad then how we are going to remove that whether local you know bill is actually going to remove this uh, corruption and then i want to talk about uh, this you know uh Ahmadni parties you know taking over the reins in um, new delhi arvind kejriwal and his arm Aadmi party so i want to talk about them also you know we'll discuss whether they will be able to fulfill the demands of people and uh, if they're going to do that how they're going to do that and whatever means they are using are actually going to fulfill their ends those ends or not so we'll discuss that later on but let us begin today with corruption issue so they passed the lokpal bill and everybody is thinking in anna hazare the, the anti corruption uh, crusader he wrapped up his uh, uh, until that uh, fasting and everybody is hailing that this uh, Lokpal bill is actually going to remove corruption etc etc but first let, let us try and understand uh, whether corruption is you know necessarily bad uh, we have to understand differentiate between you know different types of corruption so let us take one example uh, of uh, bribery as a major you know bribery is a major form of corruption that's what people think so whether bribery is you know necessarily a bad thing now we have to understand uh, that there are two types of bribery as Murray Rothbard discussed in his very important book the uh, uh, for new liberty into 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 that book Murray Rothbard distinguishes between two types of you know bribery um, uh, one is you know he calls aggressive bribery and the other one is called defensive bribery now aggressive bribery is you know illegitimate obviously because it is aggressive and defensive bribery is actually legitimate because you know by using a defensive bribery uh, the individual is trying to actually live his he's defending his own liberty he's trying to live his life uh, under the given rules and regulation of the government now first thing we have to understand that people have to give bribery because all these bureaus are you know in charge of business you know uh, they are the ones who are controlling all these businesses you know rules and regulation all these regulatory authorities all these government bureaus departments and that is the reason why people have to give bribery now what is this aggressive bribery so let's see Suppose you know I am you know I am an auto manufacturer in you know Surat city and I don't like competition coming from other people. So what I do is you know I go to the uh, auto bureaucrat in my city, let's say a municipality officer who is in charge of giving licenses to uh, other auto industry you know firms. I you know I, I give him bribe and tell him that not to give licenses to other people. So this is an aggressive form of bribery which is illegitimate what I'm doing is you know I'm you know I'm using the government apparatus to stop people from coming and entering into the market and competing with me so it, it, this action is aggressive because I'm stopping others from doing what they they want to do voluntarily right they, they want to start their own business but I'm stopping them and when I'm doing that I'm aggressing against their private property rights by doing that I'm I'm indulged into an illegitimate action aggressive action and obviously this should be punishable this aggressive bribery right that should be punishable and uh, I think most of the big tycoon business tycoons like Dhirubhai Ambani or Ratan Tata or Billa they are I think more often involved into this kind of aggressive bribery they, they bribe these bureaucrats and government officials to stop the competition from coming into the market you know from affecting their own businesses Okay, so that's illegitimate, but there is another form of bribery which I think mostly is, is practiced by mostly small businessmen and you know normal you know, what you call common man. Uh, defensive bribery is you know a bribery you know which you give to this official so that you know basically you can start your own business. For example, let's say that again I know I'm I'm somebody you know who is a budding entrepreneur and who wants to start a startup company. Let's say an auto in the, you know auto farm. 
and I don't want to stop anybody from entering into this market. What I, I want to do is that I want to start my own company. But suppose there are many rules and regulations, you know, the auto bureaucrats are, you know, not easily giving permission to everybody. So just to, you know, you know pass through my file from that auto bureau, what I do is that I pay them some money, I pay them bribery and, you know, that way my file is through and they give me the permission and I can start my business. So this is a defensive form of bribery where I'm just trying to defend my own liberty, my own right of starting my own business. And in that case, I'm not harming anybody. Actually, what I'm doing is I'm helping the customers because by paying this bribery, I can start my business. And if I start my business, consumers will finally have more choices available in front of them. So there's nothing wrong with this kind of defensive bribery. Defensive bribery is absolutely legitimate and absolutely justifiable because I'm not aggressing upon anybody else's private property right. What I'm doing is I'm just defending my own rights of starting a business. So we have to differentiate between this type of aggressive bribery and a defensive bribery when we're talking about this type of corruption. But as I said, the most important issue is that why people will have to go to get a permission from these government bureaus in the first place, right? that existence of that bureau that government department this government's intervention into the market these rules and regulations you know government rules and regulation that is the problem to begin with that is the root cause of this type of corruption you know if we take bribery is a is a form of corruption then that is the root cause existence of these government departments and bureaus is the root cause of this corruption so if you want to remove this corruption, then what we have to do instead of, you know, kind of, you know, blaming the people who are bribing, because I have seen many advertisement, you know, propaganda advertisement who, who actually blames the briber instead of blaming the bribee, right? The defensive briber is actually protecting himself. So instead of, you know, we, you know, kind of, you know, scolding and blaming the briber, we should be blaming the bribery. Why we should do, you know, we should go to these government bureaus in the first place to, you know, take permission. If we have to take permission, then we should be taking it from the private property owner. For example, suppose if I want to start my own, you know, auto company, then I should be taking permission of the landlord who's, you know, land I want to buy or, you know, lease out or rent out to start my own factory. If if we both agree voluntarily, the buyer and the seller, then why the heck the government comes into picture and you know, stop us from doing this business, voluntary business? And and if my customers are happy with my, you know, you know the cars which I'm producing, then you know that is the real test. That is the real market test of whether I'm you know serving my you know society members or not, whether I'm serving my customers or not. And if I'm not serving, they obviously will throw me out by stopping uh, buying my cars so that is the problem right the another <clears throat> another type of you know poly and a corruption is this political corruption where, where these public officials this these ministers and bureaucrats are swindling people's money they are gobbling up huge amounts of taxpayers money so obviously again and that is absolutely illegitimate and should be punishable but right now it's not punishable but again we have to understand that in this case, the reason why this type of political corruption exists because these bureaus are again in existence, ruling and regulating all types of businesses, right? Why the heck the government minister is in charge of, you know, handing out, let's say, 2G spectrum licenses? Why the heck the government bureaucrats and our government politicians are in charge of, you know, handing out let's say coal mining licenses, why they are, the, they are the ones who are buying all this, let's say, defense equipment, why the heck do we have this, you know, standing military in the first place. So just because these ministers are involved into taking these crucial decisions, that is the reason why they have a chance of, you know, gobbling up this taxpayers' money. So the answer of this problem is, not some you know phony Lokpal bill. You know, let's talk about Lokpal bill. Lokpal can Lokpal bill solve corruption? Absolutely not. Why? Because as I said, the root cause of corruption is having these political bureaus to begin with. As long as government is in charge of you know all these businesses, as long as they own these businesses, they regulate and control these businesses, corruption is going to take place. 
so the only solution of corruption is to remove all these bureaus you know start dismantling department one department after another you know let's say ministry of education gone ministry of health gone ministry of transportation gone ministry of coal gone right if the, all these ministries are dismantled then market can take over the private free market can take over all these functions very easily we don't have to think that only government can you know, do this kind of stuff governments can do this kind of stuff you know the public choice school tells us very clearly that there is government failure and you know theory and history is pretty clear about this thing that they cannot do anything properly right if they'll try because you know that's a problem of social calculation central planning and central planning can never work but as i say can this lokpal bill on a lokpal office can you know solve problem of corruption no it cannot because lokpal office itself is one more bureau so to remove you know if the root cause of corruption is having all these bureaus how in the world having one more bureau right in existence you know is going to remove corruption in fact it is going to add to this corruption what will happen when this lok lokayukta or lokpal office uh, officers are going to involve into corruption people are going to demand one more lokpal office on you know on the head of this already existing lokpal offices that is not the solution and if you see the lokpal bill and all the it's all shame right the constitution of lokpal bill for example says that 50% uh, of the lokpal members should come from uh, scheduled caste scheduled tribe obc minorities and women so there is reservation into this thing so do you think that these people are you know going to be honest and they are going to stop this corruption etc etc if you think then i think you are whistling dixie you know you are dreaming you are a daydreamer and the selection of this lokpal itself is all politically connected so nobody has you know kind of cut the gordian knot the lokpal will consist of a selection the selection committee will have prime minister lok sabha speaker leader of the opposition in the lok sabha and the chief justice of india these are all political officials prime minister lok sabha speaker leader of the opposition in lok sabha do you think that these people are going to appoint a kind of lokpal who is going to remove corruption again as i said if you thinking that and you know, all they are going to do that then again you are dreaming so passing this lokpal bill is not going to help remove corruption there is only one solution of removing corruption and that is removing dismantling all these government bureaus removing all these government departments right and instead of that bringing in the free market capitalist system as long as these government bureaus are in charge as long as they are controlling and regulating everything corruption will remain with us right okay so let's talk about this aam aadmi party you know they won you know very i think not handsomely but they got many 28 seats in new delhi and now arvind kejriwal is a is a chief minister of new delhi uh so many are think, thinking that this guy is going to change everything lots of expectation people are having from him right but the problem here is this that uh see you know more often what i see is that people voted for these guys because they were so frustrated with you know congress and bjp so more than a vote for the aam aadmi party i see this as a vote against congress and bjp right but in any case now arvind kejriwal is in power and he has uh the chief ministership you know seat with him what happened immediately is that people started sending him you know their demands for example i read there some street children sent him their demand that you know we want this 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 and that and now i'm hearing that some kingfisher employees are going to approach him so that they can you know kind of you know do something about the unpaid salaries which vijay malya hasn't paid them so people are going to demand all kinds of stuff now can arvind kejriwal fulfill all these demands you know this is where politics ends you know now he is the you know kind of chief minister politics ends now and economic starts the economic reality will start revealing itself in front of everybody what economic reality the economic reality is that it doesn't really matter if you have an honest chief minister or the most smartest chief ministers in the world
he cannot solve the economic problem of allocating resources where they are needed so this is an economic problem it's a technical problem right even if we put as i said the smartest guy in the world in the chief ministers in a position he will not be able to solve this problem why because you know first thing is that he has to work without the help of price system which is the you know system organic system you know which can help you you know which will actually solve the economic problem of allocating allocating resources where they are needed now he is you know totally crippled without it you know he what he is going to do is he is going to indulge into central planning social engineering if you really see and read his you know election manifesto of this you know aam aadmi party then there is nothing different from congress's or bjp's manifesto they are also proposing and promises all kind of you know all kinds of free stuff like free electricity and free water and regulating the education system and giving government jobs to people right so how how these promises are any any different from the promises which you know other political parties are making so i just don't understand how aam aadmi party is different you know or how An- arvind kejriwal is different from other people maybe he's honest but honesty is not good enough for solving the economic problem right what you need is less government if he is going to allow the free market to work on its own remove all the regulations and controls of government shrink the government make his government smaller and and allow the market to work then only he can solve all this problem right as long as he is not doing that he will not be able to solve all these problems and what will happen in a couple of months times or in a couple of years time people will be disillusioned with this people also because as i said you know his you know election manifesto is not at all different from other political parties and as i said just just you know passing a lokpal bill or putting a lokayuk in place is not going to remove corruption arvind kejriwal if he is really serious about removing corruption and solving all these problems then he will allow the free market capitalist system to work he will remove all these rules and regulations and government controls he will shrink the government he will stop spending money right when that will happen only then things will change for better as long as that is not happening i don't think so we are going to see any improvement in any kind of you know problems that you know my dear viewers you know you and i are facing the common men are facing as i say promising things is one thing and you know fulfilling it is a different thing as long as these people are going to use central planning kejriwal is doing the same thing he will not be able to fulfill his promises all right so with this you know i'm going to leave you today and you know couple of you know days time 2013 ends and the situation in 2014 is not going to be any different because the situation continues to deteriorate so i'll keep an eye on everything and i'll keep you informed you know and i'm just you know wishing all of my dear viewers you know a very happy new year a very happy and prosperous 2014 let's hope that right uh not just a false hope you have to take right step to protect your wealth only then it is going to be a prosperous year so continue to you know kind of protect yourself stay away from the government you know and and their phony paper promises no political party can solve our problems right we will have to ultimately solve our problems on our own these people can only make promises and even if they are honest enough the kind of central planning apparatus which they are using is not going to help them in fulfilling all those promises so as i said you guys take care of yourself and enjoy your new year night and i'll see you in 2014 thank you very much for watching good night